Hi, and welcome to part two in our three-part series on architectural lighting systems and applications. In our first session, we defined and listed the fundamental components, what makes up an architectural lighting system. And then we looked at the modules uh, of that system and what you might want to consider uh, when selecting those for in an architectural lighting system. And now we're going to understand those best applications for an architectural lighting system. So what are those lighting applications that really highlight architecture? So the first application that we're going to look at is wall grazing. This is a technique for lighting the vertical surfaces um, and often accentuates textures and enhances shadows. Uh, the fixtures used for wall grazing typically have narrower beam angles. Um, and as the light strikes the wall with that narrow angle, it produces that shadowing that reveals and accentuates texture. In addition to changing the beam angle of the luminaire, you can also play with the distance of the luminaire to the wall, um, and adjusting that angle can also make the shadows less or more pronounced. Uh, grazing is an application that is also effective for lighting carvings and statues. Again, you're able to highlight the textures and the details. And these fixtures, again, because they're mounted fairly close to the surface, they often are hidden inside a trough or a coffer. And you can see here uh, a couple examples of grazing fixtures. Typically, they're linear um, with narrow beam angles, and oftentimes they're purposed for either being interior or exterior based. So let's look at Toffee Factory in Newcastle, England. Uh, this was a dilapidated factory area that a local development company wanted to transform into a modern office complex. Because it was a, um, a retrofit and a new uh, sort of a retrofit of an old building into a new application, energy savings was definitely one of their goals. So they wanted to have something that uh, saved money, but again, they wanted to make sure that what people had originally thought of as a dilapidated factory was an interesting place to visit. So. Uh, they wanted to bathe the area in this vibrant, color-changing light, um, and they were able to do that and save uh, energy by using LED, dynamic color-changing LED fixtures. And you can see here at the bottom picture uh, in the orange, uh, they were using grazing lights to graze the interior of those um, roadway underpasses um, because there was some interesting texture there uh, and it was a nice way to highlight that. And you can see they did that concurrently in the top picture, picture through those um, multiple underpasses. And this tends to be a pretty f uh, popular exterior application of wall grazing. So you can see here in uh, Workington, England, at the Oxford Road underpass, um, the architectural lighting firm came in um, with the management company and said, we want to make this pedestrian path a little bit more interesting, breathe some life into it. Um, so they revitalized this structure. Again, dynamic, color-changing luminaires, uh, saved money in terms of energy consumption, um, but because there was some really neat um, stonework in this underpass, when they grazed these walls, you were able to really bring out that texture, and you can see the highlights uh, in the shadows on those walls. Um, and here in uh, the center point high rise in Karachi, Pakistan, um, there was a building that was having trouble standing out. And so taking again some of these linear based grazing lights and highlighting parts of the architecture, um, they were able to make something that was dynamic, that stood out amongst a number of other buildings in the area. And, you know, of course, you're not going to use just one application of lighting. So they can combined um, wash lighting and graze lighting and backlighting to really make this a dynamic looking building. The next application area we want to look at is wash lighting or washing. Um, and unlike grazing where we're trying to highlight and bring out those shadows, washing is, tend, uh, is, is used to evenly illuminate a, a vertical surface and to flatten those textures and often hide some of those surface imperfections. Um, some of the other benefits of wall washing is that the wall appears bright and it draws attention to the architecture um, and creates sort of a luminous background for people and furniture. Um, by enhancing that architecture, the room feels larger, more spacious. Um, you know, the visual comfort of that room is enhanced through wall washing. Um, 
Fixtures, uh, wall washing type fixtures are often positioned some distance away from the wall uh, at, or the surface that's being lit at an angle that's intended to minimize that glare or shadowing uh, from other op objects. Uh, and again, you can see here some pictures of real dynamic wall washing applications where not only are we highlighting um, the architecture backgrounds, but we're, we're creating it, as, we're using it as a dynamic canvas. And there's an example also of a, of a wall washing fixture. Um, so the Blue Water, Sh Blue Water Shopping Center uh, in England uh, wanted to replace their previous uh, lighting system with something that would reduce their both their energy costs but also their maintenance costs. As you can see in the bottom picture, they've got a fairly large atrium here. And if you've got to go up and replace those wash lights or change the color in those wash lights with any regularity, you've got to close down that atrium. You've got to move tables out of the way. You've got to bring scissor lifts in. So there's a significant amount of cost in making that a dynamic and interesting um, uh, environment with traditional uh, architectural lighting. So using dynamically controlled LED lighting um, not only are they able to improve their daytime illumination and, and accent some of the interior of the mall, but they're also able to wash that interior atrium uh, with colored light and change the color as needed. And because it's an LED-based system, it lasts significantly longer than a traditional light source. The forum shops at Caesars Palace in Nevada in the U.S., um, Obviously, they've got this beautifully trompe painted ceiling that looks like a Venetian uh, or a, a Venetian skyline or something. Um, and it's beautifully painted clouds and sky. And they're able to wash that ceiling with um, color-changing luminaires, um, which allow them to sort of change what the environment feels like. So while the painting remains the same, how you light that and changing the colors, changing the direction with those wash lights really makes that environment seem alive. We have here the Abbe Saint Victor in Versailles, France. Um, again, a building looking to stand out. It was a, a relatively historic uh, building, um, but it needed to highlight uh, the heritage of the building and the location that it was in. Um, so the team wanted to wash this building in light. They wanted to make it vibrant. Um, but they also wanted to be able to change it. So not just from warm light to cool light, but they actually said they want the building to be able to transition from gold to silver. Um, so they gradually change that color temperature of the building, washing it um, in, in tunable and color changing lights. Back in the US in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, there's the Big Four Bridge. Um, and so this is a pedestrian walkway and bicycle path that connects the uh, that goes over the Ohio River, connecting Louisville, Kentucky with Jeffersonville, Indiana. And this is a partnership between both the, um, the public municipality but also the private waterfront corporation. They wanted to draw people downtown. Um, and they had this bridge, which architecturally is, is quite interesting, but uh, needed some highlighting. And so, again, they used some wash lighting. They washed the structure of the bridge, um, and they made this a real... Uh, vibrant area for visitors and and residents to come visit and and see. Uh, a similar to wash lighting, we have flood lighting. And the difference here is that we're really providing some high intensity illumination um, across a wide area uh, with flood lighting. And these fixtures are often designed for large scale installations. So think more about skyscrapers, casinos, bridges, um, large monuments or themed attractions um, where you're looking to light the entire facade or the entire monument with a lot, a lot of light, um, like you see on the picture down here. One side note, this was a special event where they added additional um, entertainment luminaires to the top of the building that created those um, multi-directional beams, but they flood light, used floodlights to light the entire facade of that building. Uh, and you can see at the top of the, the screen here uh, a sample of an example of what an exterior uh, rated color changing floodlight looks like. Uh, so in Ankara, Turkey, at the North Ankara Amphitheater, um, they had this beautiful amphitheater with this great um, sort of awning over the building um, that they wanted to highlight. And so they added in 
a, a fairly large number, probably over 40 or so, um, large-scale color-changing floodlights. Um, they were great because they were LED, so in a, again, in a, what might be a difficult, difficult area to get to, um, we don't have to worry about lamp changes, don't have to worry about color changes. That's all inherent in a color-changing LED system. Uh, they used a variety of beam angles, so you still change the beam angles in your floodlights to cover different areas or different throw distances. Um, and they're able, as you see in the picture, to really draw people into this amphitheater um, by flooding this the the light flooding the the amphitheater with this dynamic color changing light. And again, often these projects begin or are part of a citywide beautification. So on the flip side of using a large number of floodlights, a very small number of floodlights can also make a pretty dynamic uh, look in architectural lighting. So this here is the Christchurch International Air Traffic Control Tower in Christchurch, New Zealand, um, where they used only four floodlights um, to light the tower, um, create a really dynamic looking effect, but having minimal light that shines up towards the sky, which would could potentially distract air traffic controllers or, or, or pilots. Um, so again, we're looking at a system that's fairly cost effective, both in terms of energy consumption um, and maintenance costs, but also cost effective in terms of, of luminaire selection. Uh, and they saw an energy reduction of almost 70% with this project. Uh, here at the Sandridge Commons in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, um, what they wanted to do was to highlight these different window shapes, these different perspectives that they had in this building. Um, and there wasn't much of a need around the, the, um, the area to really make this a, um, a dynamic, color-changing spectacle. What they wanted to do was quite simply highlight that, that interesting architecture at Sandridge Commons. Um, so they used static white floodlights, um, but they were able to evenly illuminate 393 feet, almost 120 meters of this tower, um, and highlight those different window shapes. And again, because we're using LED uh, white light here, we reduce the amount of energy consumption by 73%. So spotlighting is a technique uh, for highlighting a point of interest with a strongly focused beam of light. So the luminaires tend to be a little bit smaller. Uh, they tend to have narrower beam angles. And, and again, like grazing where we're trying to highlight a texture, the spotlight is trying to create a point of interest. Um, and you know, this, this type of light typically adds uh, drama or style by, by highlighting. Uh, so at the Baron Palace in Cairo, Egypt, um, we spotlights were used to um, highlight some of that ornamental architecture. This is a Hindu inspired palace um, in Egypt um, with a lot of really unique architectural details. And so again, using multiple applications of grazing lights and wash lights, um, uh, we, we create some, some visual interest here. You can see a variety of color temperatures used um, and those spotlights really bring out some of that ornate detail. And again, an all LED based system replace, decreased the power consumption at the palace by 80%. Uh, at the Belfast City Hall in Belfast, Northern Ireland, this was a, a fairly prominent European building that was chosen to be uh, a pilot for a, this Illuminate program in the European Union. So again, we have a municipal building that's partnering up with some private entities to uh, illuminate their building facade. Um, and so why not take a, a, an interesting building here? And in most of the times, you can see in the top and the bottom picture, it's got white light or cool white light or warm white light. But for special occasions, you have that option for the dynamic color changing. Um, and again, using spotlighting here to highlight those architectural details, those columns, the rotunda. Um, so you can use the spotlights to really create some depth and interest to a large building facade. Uh, at the Potawatomi Bingo Hall in Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin, uh, they had this very dynamic uh, welcome wall. And you can see here there's actually two different types of applications. The top two pictures are, 
pictures are utilizing a, a wall washing, um, actually backlighting type of wash application. But the bottom picture is highlighting uh, some additional things you can do with spotlighting. So there's some small spotlights that are placed behind the, the facade there. Um, so in addition to having a very smooth, continuous, um, washed wall that you can light dynamically, you can also create, again, that visual interest of a, of a spotlight um, highlighting each of those areas. There's over 600 LED fixtures in here uh, in the 62 foot by 123 foot wall. And when we talked about um, control system selection before, uh, this system, because of its scale and number of fixtures, utilized an Ethernet-based system. So that's all we have time for in this session. When we join again for our last session, we'll finish up at looking, some, looking at some of the uh, applications and luminaire types for the architectural lighting applications and talk about customer segments. Thanks again for joining me and look forward to seeing you at our last session.